everyone welcome back to my channel thank you for clicking on this video and joining me today today we're going to be discussing some prayer points these are my 2019 prayer points actually just the beginning of them um, as the Lord gives me things I just write them I always try to uh, tie in a scripture to it so let's start so these are my prayer points I just wrote them out um, I will be like typing them and like putting them down here somewhere so as I uh, mentioned the prayer point and the scripture it will be down here somewhere also I'm going to be posting this on my Instagram and yeah um I would love for you guys to really take advantage of the opportunity to have some like already pre-written prayer points sometimes we go into prayer and we don't really know what we feel like praying for uh we don't always have like um a direction in our prayer so I find that having prayer points really helps me to focus my prayer um, many times when I go into my prayer closet I am burdened with something so I am praying for something in particular or praying for someone in particular uh, but generally speaking um, I think it's a really good practice to, or a habit I guess you would say to um, have like general prayer uh, prayer points that you pray like you know once a week or a few times a week um, just to make sure that you're covering like general things like you know obviously world peace and hunger and stuff like that you know important so today I'm gonna have to put on my glasses like first maybe I should clean them excuse you know the glare on my lenses I'm gonna try to like maybe keep my head down this is like really weird I'm like but yeah I'm gonna try to like not have glare on my glasses but I, I don't know how to stop that because of my ring light so 2019 prayer points these prayer points are going to be prayer points that you can pray at any time during the year um these this section is more like uh personal prayer points I will probably make some prayer points for other things like um, specific, let's just say to your church, uh, specific to your marriage, for those who are married, specific to your children, um, you know, specific even to your, your home, your belongings, like your material goods, because the Bible says that the Lord gives us power to make wealth. So I don't think it's wrong to pray over your personal goods or pray about your material items because the Lord has blessed you to be able to acquire those things. And when we are good stewards with what the Lord gives us, he gives us more. The word of God says that those who are faithful in little will be given much. 2019 prayer points. My first point, while I was actually getting ready, the Lord put it on my heart. You will be the head and not the tail. This year, 2019, Let's try to excel in everything that we do. Let's try to put our best foot forward, whatever that means. Let's try our hardest. Let's give our 150%. We will be the head and not the tail. Deuteronomy 28.13 says that the Lord will make us the head and not the tail. So he's going to put us at the top, not at the bottom. And it's the Lord that's going to do it. So do not try on your own to do this really depend on the Lord for it. He is going to do it for you. He's going to make you the head and not the tail. He's going to make you like the person at work that people are like, when we need an answer, we go to this person. He's going to make you the person at work that your boss is like, I wish every employee could be like you. He's going to make you the student at school that your teacher's like, if everyone could be like you, I would love my job. Like that is the head and not the tail. You are going to be on the top. If you're on a track team, you're going to be the fastest. If you play basketball, you're going to be alley-ooping all over the place. Like you are going to be the head and not the tail. Deuteronomy 28, 13. My second prayer point, you will know the truth this year. The truth. If there is any doubt in your mind about your walk with God, about your faith, about who God is, about what it means to serve him, this year, he's going to reveal himself to you in ways that you never thought possible. It's going to set you free from your doubt, from your fear, from your worry, from thinking maybe you're not saved. The Lord is going to give you 
of the mind of Christ and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. John 8, this year, 2019, we are going to be ambassadors of Christ. The Lord is going to use us to compel men back to him. The Lord is going to use us to draw people who are hurting, who are in pain, who are suffering in silence to him. He is going to bind up their wounds. He's going to heal the brokenhearted. He is going to shine light in darkness and he's going to use us as his ambassadors. Remember, you are ambassadors of Christ. You are laborers with Christ. You're not doing it alone. You're not doing it on your on your own strength. As an ambassador of Christ, you work for him. You're basically his spokesperson. So whatever message you're bringing, it's the message of Christ. And I don't want to put it this way, but the truth is when they shut you down, they're not shutting you down. They're shutting him down. So we take it personally because we know the love of Christ. We know what it means to have Jesus in our life. And we know that it's amazing. And it's hard to accept when people are like, no, I'm not interested. But you know what? Pray for them. Lord, you know what? That person told me today they're not interested, but open another door for them, even if it's not with me. Just open another door because they need to know who you are. They might not be interested today, but a day will come when they will wish that they were interested. And you know what? They deserve to have the mercy of God and the grace of God to be ready. This year, 2019, we will be laborers and there will be more laborers. It says that after Peter preached the first gospel message they said they were pricked in their hearts they said oh my gosh what do we do to jesus you're telling us that that guy was really god and he was holy and we killed him but he rose again but what does that mean for us and peter said in acts 238 he said repent turn away from your sin stop living the life you're living turn away from your sin be baptized in the name of jesus christ and you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Three steps. He said to them, repent, be baptized, and just get the Holy Ghost. They did that. And in that day, 3,000 people were added to the church. 3,000 people were added to the church. Jesus himself said, so we're thinking this is like 2,000 years before. You know, this is like 2,000 minus 30, let's just say. That Jesus is saying, Ask God to send more laborers. And if he said that so many years ago, how much more desperate we are to have laborers in this harvest. We need souls to be one. It's not just good enough for us to go to church every Sunday. It's not good enough for us to know about Jesus. We need it says laborers. The fields are white and ready to harvest, meaning souls are ready. There are people out there hungry for God. There are people out there waiting to meet you. There are people standing on a corner of a street at a bus stop, in the third aisle at the grocery store. There's people standing in a thrift shop because you are going to walk in there and you are going to preach to them the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is our reassurance that when we go out, we will win souls. Jesus said, they're ready. They're ready. We just need to go and reap that harvest. So be a laborer with Christ this year in his harvest and win some souls in Jesus name. And our scripture reference, as you guys saw below, was Matthew 9, 38 and Luke 10. Next prayer point, whatever we touch will prosper. Genesis 39, 5. I shared this verse on my Facebook. And honestly, when I read that verse, it just hit me so deep. Everything that Joseph was put in charge of prospered because the Lord was with him. So we have God with us. Let everything that we do this year prosper. Let everything we touch prosper. The Bible says that Potiphar realized, he recognized that God was with Joseph. So we want people this year to recognize that the blessing of God Wherever is with us. Wherever we go this year, we're going to be blessed. Joshua 1.3 says, Everywhere that you plant the sole of your foot will be yours. Walk around your neighborhood and claim it for Jesus. Walk around your church pews, the empty pews that you see every Sunday. Claim them for Jesus. Walk around your school. If you have a dog, walk, around, walk your dog around schools and playgrounds and pray for the families. Pray for the families and the houses in your neighborhood, on your street. Just walk up and down your street. 
claim the the souls, the people that live on your street. We will be Jesus. blessed at all times. This is one of my favorite scriptures and one of my favorite Fred Hyman songs. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. So yeah, that is one of my favorite scriptures. So you're going to be blessed in the city. You're going to be blessed in the field. You're going to be blessed at work. You're going to be blessed at home. Your pantry is going to be blessed. You ain't never going to be hungry. Your bills are always going to be paid. The love of God is always going to be shining through your home. You're always going to have heat, hot water, electricity, and gas. The Lord got you covered. So that is my Deuteronomy 28, 3 and 5. That is my reassurance. That is my, when I look at my bank account and I only got $7 left, I'm like, Lord, I'm blessed in the city and I'm blessed in the field. My pantry is blessed. My children are blessed, although I don't have children yet, but I do have a dog, so he's blessed. So yeah, like honestly, the word of God is so rich. It's so rich. We could just pray the word of God all day and all his promises, but yo, this video got to end at some point, sadly. We yeah. will be ready for heaven this year. Come what may, even if nothing else happens for us this year, should Jesus come back? we will make it. You may be struggling today in your prayer life. Tomorrow it's going to be better. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy is going to come in the morning. Hold on to God. Please don't ever let go. It's not easy at times. Sometimes he's silent. Sometimes you're in a season of silence. You're in a season of storm and tempest. But believe, Jesus may be sleeping in the back of the boat, but if you'll go and wake him up and say, Jesus, I'm about to drown. He will calm the waves. He will tell the sea to stop. The Bible says that the Lord will raise up his standard against any work of the enemy in your life. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will raise up his standard against it, against any form of attack from the enemy. And you better believe you're going to make it to heaven. We are going to make it to heaven. I pray that these prayer points have been a blessing to you. Um, I will come back with like a part two, a part three, a part four. Who knows? But uh, this is just the beginning in my book of my prayer points for this year. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. And continue to pray, pray these prayer points. I pray that they have been a blessing to you. I will see you guys in my next video. Remember, you are too blessed to be stressed. Take care and God bless.